And then, what's great about the 50-50s is, uh, starts like this, good condition, but the more you wear it and the more you wash it, whereas cottons will turn to crap, the 50-50s just turn to this right here. Which, as you can see up next to the light, you can see through it. It's like pantyhose. So that's what it turns into. This one will eventually turn into this the more you wear it. So that's like, just like wine, it only gets better with age. <laughs> This is a uh, Michael Rios or Heaven Smiles. It's kind of like his company that he did with the buddy. And they're working out of California and they do all this like original hand printed uh, designs. Usually like artists like Miles Davis like this one. He does like John Coltrane. He does Carlos Santana stuff. Uh, he does Bob Marley. There's several different artists that he does but uh, Anyway, got this one from a guy who worked at Jersey's actually, which is the t-shirt company out of uh, Alabama. And uh, he just had that and he was getting rid of it. And uh, of course I picked it up for the pretty good price in my opinion. And um, what's interesting is about, about these is uh, they're all very unique. Each one's different from the other. Uh, there's not another one just like this out there. There's more with Miles Davis, but not the same print. And uh, what's kind of neat is he kind of always leaves like these little bits of paint on the back, like right there, right here, like from maybe where his finger had paint on it when he was like grabbing it and kind of handling it. So that's kind of how you know it's like an authentic one. I mean, it's clearly authentic, but that's kind of another way. Patton has some pretty cool stuff. But he knows it'll be safe here. I'll never get rid of it. But yeah, I got a good bit of, uh, good bit of Batman actually. Yes, here's another like mint condition 50-50 right here. Or pretty good condition. I swear it feels like cotton, man. I'm telling you, feel that. Does that not kind of feel like cotton? That's just because it's all thick and hasn't been worn in. This is like art you would have on your wall, but you can wear it, which to me is cooler. Like to me, it's cooler to be able to go wear it around town and show people the art that you're into than just have it in your house where people would have to come to your house and uh, go look at it on your wall. So that's, I think, one of the big appeals to t-shirts in general. But uh, yeah, there's different artists out there like Mosquito Heads is a company out of, uh, I think, uh, Venice Beach area near LA. And they would do a bunch of t-shirts with like the, you've seen those with like the bleach kind of bleaching design. And like they have like uh, James Dean, all these different people as well, pop culture people. And they're like a, they're like a collab group of guys that were like all artists that were do, doing them in the early 90s down there. And he was, I guess, maybe more Northern California doing him up there. And he actually did stuff for Carlos Santana. And that might be how he kind of got to the more of the mainstream is doing like clothing for Carlos and like his, even his instruments, he would like paint them up and do it real cool. And like during his tours and his concerts, he would like wear his stuff and, you know, his instruments would all be decked out. So he was like really into him and uh, good friends with the guy. So that's kind of how he got like off the uh, ground. But he is still live, and like I said, he's still, as of recently, he was making some more stuff, um, which is kind of interesting. I know he's battling cancer right now, and I'm not sure how that's kind of going with him, but uh, I know he is battling that. So I've been kind of trying to keep tabs on him and see what's going on. Like this guy right here might have some good ones on it. Yeah, right there's a real good one. See up top, both those. See, they're obviously hairs. Isn't that interesting, dude? It's like a watermark. Yeah, this is interesting. This is a Salvador Dali shirt. This is the first RT I've ever... I think that's the first RT I've ever found. Of course, I love Dali. But it's done the same way as they did these uh, MC Escher shirts. Yeah, it's kind of similar. It's got like a bunch of its pieces of art on it. So I kind of like that. Like This is super rare, too. There's a good bit of these Eschers out there, but there's not hardly any of these Dali's. I do like the RTs. It's the only one I have of his. Not sure if I'll ever get another one. I'm always down to get any more. I mean, if there's anybody watching that has any that wants to trade or get rid of it, just let me know. He'll have like a base and then he'll do like one screen of like, say this guy. And like, as you can see over, over or like behind him was like just that other face where you can see the eyes. So it's like a whole kind of like bunch of layers that he keeps screen printing on there. So he'll, he'll print it out one layer and then he'll get a like a, hair dryer and kind of blow it dry, get it dry as fast as he can so he can go ahead and add another layer and just keeps going over layers and layers and using different color paints. And then it kind of gives it that like, kind of like multi-dimensional effect, which is super rad. And 
That's, I mean, that's what I know. That's, and I'm not like an expert on him. Like, I've never watched the guy do him. Or like I said, he got out of the game for a long time. And I guess that guy that reached out to him was like, hey, man, these are selling for a high dollar. Like, if you're needing some extra income, just start making these again. You're going to be able to sell them for at least 300 all day. Because I'm sure back in the day, he'd sell this for like, I don't know, 50 bucks. Who knows? Like, it probably wasn't that much. But they're going for super high right now. And it makes sense. I mean, that's art. That's, I mean, this is like having a Picasso on a shirt that's original. I mean, it's insane. So, and like I said, once he passes and he's no longer with us, I mean, the price will go way up because that'll be, uh, the, just like with art, you'll know that's it. That's all, there's a finite amount out there and that's it. Um, so right now, nobody knows that shirt exists. So some shirts you gotta take off your incident because people steal it. Like that one right there, I'd never post because people would steal that and start making loads of those in China. And, Selling people. I'm kind of more careful now like posting different stuff on my Instagram that's like rare one of ones um, because I was having pictures stolen where people I guess from China were screenshotting it and making that same exact print on like just some new Gildan shirts and selling them on eBay for like 20 bucks 15 20 bucks and that kind of takes away from the uh, street presence of like that print of shirt because if you wear that when it's just a one of one, somebody sees it on the streets, they're like, oh, where'd you get that? I want that shirt. But if you can get it for $15 on eBay, it's, oh yeah, my brother's got that shirt. But I mean, it's not the original. So, it, you know, I had to stop posting rare stuff. Like for instance, this shirt right here, this is the only Mike Tyson like this I've ever seen. I had this on my Instagram and I took it down, thankfully before they stole it and were printing them on eBay. So this one's still just a one of one, but that is uh, no longer on my Instagram. It's probably not for sale for who knows how long. And it's the same with like, uh, like this King Kong shirt there, I'll never post that one on my Instagram because someone's gonna steal that. Unless I have like a watermark or something over the print where they can't steal it. Sometimes if I have a shirt that I never see out there, you kinda always wanna be researching and see if anybody else has one out there. I feel like a lot of guys do that. And uh, see, I'd be looking up this Catherine Will shirt I had and I was like, man, I can never find one. And then finally I found my picture on eBay. It was the same background, like I had the same rug on all my pictures and it was that exact picture that I took and they were selling them for 15 or $20. It was coming out of China. And then that's when I realized, and then I started looking up other shirts I had, and I was finding a couple others that I had on there, too. So I was, that's when I realized I was getting ripped, and it's like, I mean, there's not anything you can do about it. Because in eBay's eyes, it's like, well, we're still making money. Even if they're selling this reprint, we're getting a percentage of that. So for them, it doesn't make sense to kind of stop that, because that's still money to them, so they don't care. So, I mean, they'll never do anything about it. And I guess technically you don't own that picture. I don't know. I feel like if you put something on social media, I think you don't own it or something like that. I don't know. I have to look into all the like legalities of it, but I'm pretty sure that's a legal thing. So it's just something to be aware about. Make sure you don't make that mistake again. I mean, I know they're not like hands down like this, but those are pretty rare. And since he's got so many, you think he'd do it. But I wouldn't do anymore. I'll keep that. And yeah, this guy right here is like if you, the most valuable ones are all the ones with freaking uh, um, Miles Davis. Those are the most valuable ones. Yeah, the freaking pink peach color down there. I swear, this thing. If you wore this around town, it's like you're popping, dude. You're freaking popping hard. And don't you love like that little how like the paint got on it right there? Oh uh, yeah, that is. And even on the tag, you see that tag? It's like all green and red. It's neat. Freaking sick. That's the work of art, man. I don't know if I'll ever wear it out, but that's sweet. It almost should be put in a... I don't know, frame. I agree, dude. Just have like an art on the wall. Yeah, I agree.